Hi, Rob. How are you? Good. Hey, sorry. I just good. got the long info. No, you're good. You're just in time. That's perfect. I just wanted to test everything before everybody else got on. The I can hear you. Yep. Yep. How are things? Good. Just busy doing these things. <laughs> I can only imagine. Your whole day is probably full of these. Uh-oh, I think you froze. There we go. You froze there for a second. <laughs> we have some people already coming in, but I can hear you perfectly. I can see you perfectly. So if you're okay, I'm going to let them start coming in here. All righty. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I think you have everybody on mute. There we go. Hi, Anthony. Hey, hi, Bernadette. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being on the call. We appreciate it. Yeah. Well, it looks like I got my SBA loan. Just waiting on final approval from the bank, but it all looks good. Great. We're just, just going to figure out how to reopen. And then I had a couple questions on uh, working in the bakery, how we're going to social distance and try and work. Oh, I hear you. Very good. Now, are you guys completely shut down right now? Or are you? I, yeah, I shut down March 19th. Okay. And uh, I'm right beside the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and we're an older staff, and I have a heart condition, high blood pressure, so I was nervous. And we I don't decided, blame you. My son lives in Queens, New York, and he was just hammering me, shut down, shut down. So I shut down. I don't blame you. Sometimes it's just not worth it. That's, yeah. That's too stressful. But, you know, legally, I could have been open the whole time, and I decided that. Uh, you know, I was going to try and open March 31st, then Governor Wolf closed us until April 15th and April 30th, and now it's, <laughs> May, now it's May 8th, but I, I'm going to try and get back to work on May 5th, Tuesday, May 5th, and I think that's Mother's Day week, so we'll see what oh, we come up with. You know. Good timing. <laughs> yeah, the bakery's Although we missed been Easter. Business. Yeah, the, the bakery's been in business 85 years. This is the first Easter we've ever missed. Oh, business. goodness. Yeah. yeah. That's heartbreaking. That's hard. Yeah. Hi, Andrea. We, just... a... Andrea, can you hear me okay? I can't. Hi. Uh, just two seconds ago, but I can okay. now. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And is that Ashley that joined as well? It is. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Ashley, good. How are you? Good. So we have about 25 that should be on the call today. So unless a few others um, hop in after we're done, but we should have about 25 today. But kudos to the ones who are early. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, since this started, I, I've been on six webinars, uh, two RBAs, uh, three uh, NFIBs, uh, a couple of um, What's it called? Uh, Chamber of Commerce. You know, oh, trying to figure all this out. Yeah. <laughs> They're I'm helpful. Pretty good like, at it. I feel like, it, especially on, on our ones, of course, I want to say ours are the best, but um, on our calls, it's all the people in the same boat. You're all bakers. You're all dealing with the same issues. So I think they're yeah, so I, helpful I, to I, hear what everybody else is doing. I've really appreciated the RBA ones. It's been really helpful. And uh, yeah, that's why I want to pick the brains of my, my peers. Right, exactly. <laughs> Andrea, in the chat box, I put your information and Rob, yours as well, just to say um, a little welcome. But Andrea, I did mention that you would be able to answer calls as there or answer questions on the chat box as they come in. I go ahead and <coughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And then once we start, I'll, I'll mute everybody again, um, except for Rob. <laughs> oh, you crushed it. That's in the garden spot. <laughs> Somebody playing golf? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't play real golf. I've been playing virtual golf. <laughs> well, you crushed it. Well done, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll go
go ahead and put everybody on mute until um, until we get started here. There we go. That looks good, Andrea. <laughs> Almost as good as my fake bakery background. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll, I'll unmute everybody. It's a little too quiet. I don't like the quiet. <laughs> Hi, John. I don't think it works very well. <laughs> we'll remove that. <laughs> After about four or five of these, I figured out how to do the background. Although I used a green thing, the green screen behind me, so now I look a little, I look a little green. I was just going to say, my walls well, are green. My walls are green, so that's why it's showing through. <laughs> there we go. I was going to say, Bernadette, what baker are you in? <laughs> Photo number one four six. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, John. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? Good. How about you? Good. We're good. Thank you. How are things? Now that you're not the, now that you're the immediate board president, past board president. Yeah. Good. Uh, we got our stimulus uh, <coughs> Friday. Oh, great. And uh, yeah, but you know, a million questions on how to spend it and, and what to do. Perfect. Good call to be on. Yeah. Yeah. Very timely. How many do you have on the call today? So we had 25 um, reservation or uh, RSVPs, and they're just starting to come in right now. Hi, Mike from Fake Smart. Hello, how we doing? Good, how are you? Doing well. How are things in Chicago? They're sunny today, so I will take that. Nice, nice. Same here. Good. Okay, we're getting a few more hopping in here, so. I'm gonna go ahead and mute again, just as all of the folks start coming in. just waiting on about five more and then we'll get started.
You know what, we just have, oh, there we go. A couple more coming in. We will get started. Patty, I just unmuted your line. So uh -oh. I, just, I just said thank you to John for being our, our past immediate past president and Patty is our current president. So that just happened last week. So congratulations to yeah. both of them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna mute myself. I have a washing machine going in my makeshift office. <laughs> you got <Hang> it. <laughs> Actually, I think we're gonna um, get started. Rob, I'm gonna unmute you. This is like a fun game of mute and unmute, it's like pressing all the buttons. Um, we have a few more that should be joining us. I think we have between 20 and 25 um, that signed up for today's webinar, but um, we're going to get started since it's just a little past two. So we'd like to um, thank the Small Business Administration for hopping on this call today. This is such an important uh, time to get the information right from the source. So we appreciate Rob you being on the call and we also have Andrea from the SBA on the call. Andrea is going to be answering some questions. So if you have any questions that you'd like to type out and put in the chat, um, Andrea will be able to answer those as it's, you know, if you have questions that come up as Rob is giving his presentation. So um, without further ado, Rob, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Can everyone hear me? All right. Very good. All right. Excellent. So uh, again, my name is uh, Rob Scott. I'm the regional administrator for the U.S. Small Business Administration, uh, along with uh, my colleague, Andrew Roker, who also works in the, in the regional office with me as well. Um, the regional area that we're talking about is Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a huge time for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, most of us are working seven days a week. It uh, has been like that for over a month. I know all of you are, are more than familiar with those seven day a week uh, hours and, and certainly what, what you all do uh, as uh, small business owners. Uh, to kind of give you a, kind of a, a, a generalized uh, statement about what the U.S. Small Business Administration is doing now and what we are offering, uh, certainly I'm going to take question and answers and as we drill down on, on some of the things that we're offering. A um, <clears throat> couple two programs that I will mention uh, during this this crisis that we're all experiencing is uh, the, the first program being the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Um, I do know we have folks in many different states uh, that, that are members of this organization. So depending on what state you are in, it's when you were able to open up and begin applying for the what we're referring to as the idle loan. Um, that is a loan that's up to $2 million, uh, a 30-year term, uh, you know, different aspects in it, but uh, that is currently at the SBA working through the system through our Office of Disaster Assistance. Um, if you all need help, if you did apply for an economic injury disaster loan uh, and would like us to check up on the status of it, feel free to reach out to myself or Andrea. Uh, we'll hunt that down for you. But probably what you guys really wanted to talk to me about is what is referred to as the PPP loan or the Paycheck Protection Program. This was legislation that came out of the CARES Act, which was a little over three weeks ago, which allocated $349 billion to the U.S. Small Business Administration to offer forgivable loans through local lenders. So you, you all on this call could go to your local lender. Uh, apply for a PPP loan, uh, and then they would submit it into our system, and then subsequently you guys would receive monies from the PPP program. Um, as of last Thursday at 10 a.m., we had reached our appropriated amount of $349 billion. We reached it in two weeks. Um, certainly there was huge interest in this program. Um, Congress, as we speak, are debating uh, reappropriating more funds for a second round of PPP loans. Uh, there's talk of 250 billion, 350 billion, whatever it ends up being, um, it's gonna be within the next couple days that we are gonna have uh, more appropriations to continue the PPP program. So if you did not get an application in on the first round, I'd highly recommend you look at doing it on the second round. To kind of drill down a little more on the PPP program, 
Um, there are certain terms that apply um, for when you apply as a small business owner or a nonprofit, but essentially to kind of summarize it is it is a forgivable loan as long as certain terms are met. These terms being 75% of the monies in the loan that you provide, that you get, are provided for payroll. That would include yourself along with any employees that, that you would have in your business. If you provided that during an eight week period of time, and that was in the legislation, 100% of the forgivable loan would hence be forgiven. The other 25% uh, could be spent for you know, ordinary business expenses, rent, mortgages, those types of things, leases on vehicles or, or whatever different expenses that, that you all have while operating your small business. Uh, common questions I get um, on the eight week period and in the 75% is, hey, you know, specifically in your guys' situation, if since you guys are retail bakers, you know, I have a storefront. My state is saying, hey, guess what? I can't open up yet. Do I have to pay these employees since I get the disbursement of funds? The answer is yes. Uh, and the reasoning being is the whole purpose of the legislation is to keep people on payroll. So when you are able to open up your storefront and open up your doors for customers, that you still have those employees uh, on your payroll, in your shop, so when we can open up as a country and, a, and if you're a state or city or wherever you're located at, um, you can begin immediately having customers come in and you've got the employees on hand that can help you run your business. Um, so I know that's that's a common question. I, I've had it, well, can we stagger it, whatnot? Uh, unfortunately, the direction that the poly, policy makers made, no, because the purpose of the legislation was, again, to keep people off unemployment, to keep people paid and involved in your business so that when you opened up, you could hit the ground running, you wouldn't need to retrain staff, and it would be like you guys just closed overnight and opened up uh, up the next day. I know that's simplistic, um, but that was kind of the, the purpose of the legislation. Um, obviously, uh, there's some questions on the lender side, which you guys are probably less concerned about other than when am I going to get the funds from the PPP program. What I will tell you, and just for your general knowledge, uh, the moment the lender got approved from us, the SBA, for the funding for your business, they have 10 days, that is the rule, 10 days from the approval from us that they have to disperse and close the loan with you. They have to give an initial disbursement of funds to you, not necessarily the full amount, but at least an initial uh, in, uh, disbursement of funds. And then within 30 days of, of the approval from us, they have to give a final disbursement, meaning the full amount of the loan needs to be uh, certainly handed off to you guys. I have not heard of many lenders that are taking that 30 days. Obviously, we're still early. Um, it just the, the portal just closed last Thursday. Um, what I'm hearing from most people, most businesses that are getting disbursements, it's basically they're giving the whole tranche of money to them right then and there. Um, I will stop there because I know there's probably like 50 questions uh, waiting for me uh, to kind of uh, answer on, on specifics to your guys' industry. So I will open up, but one other, a uh, couple other items other than just the PPP. The SBA does offer other programs other than just the, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan and the PPP program. We also have our traditional programs like the 7A, the SBA Express Loans, that um, an SBA lender can certainly offer. And that is something maybe you all long-term should maybe look at uh, as we, if, if you got a PPP, maybe down the line, look at that. Um, or even now look at it if, you're, if your lender will entertain the conversation. Um, so we have that. Also, local governments are, and this is outside the Small Business Administration, uh, local governments are also offering small business loans through their CDBG programming. Um, it, though they're, they're not these large amounts, like $25,000 or $50,000 loans, they're, they're like $10,000 and below type loans, but it, maybe that is a, a resource that you turn to, but they are, some of them are forgivable loans, others are not, so that's another resource I would look at. Uh, the other ones that are coming down the road is from the small business development centers. 
Um, each state has one and, and most region has one, has a small business development center. Those are partially funded by the SBA. They're getting an influx of billions of dollars to help small businesses. And then in this legislation um, that is looking like it's going to be passed in the next coming days that will reappropriate more funds, there's going to be funding for CDFIs. And CDFIs are basically specialized uh, lending entities that if your business is located in what I would say a, an emerging market, so a community that maybe needs some uplifting a little bit, um, that would be another resource that I would turn to if your business is located in areas like that or in a rural area is another one that the CDFIs do target. So that's another way that you all can get funding. Um, I will close out with saying this. I, I have heard this from a number of small business owners that they have went to certain lenders and I won't name them, but certain lenders that have said, well, we got your application, but we didn't put it in. We didn't have enough time or whatever it may be. It is up to you on the second round of funding if you want to depend on your particular vendor who may not have put in your PPP application. But I will tell you there's a host of other lenders that you can turn to for a PPP application into our system. If you go to sba.gov backslash paycheck protection, there's a tool there. It looks just like a Google map and it says find lenders. And if you click on that, you put in your zip code of your business or your home or wherever, it will give you uh, the lenders that are offering PPP loans in your area that you can contact. And when I, and lenders is a very broad term. So I want you all to know there are big lenders like the Bank of America's of the world, the, the Wells Fargo's of the world, all the way down to your small community bank, to credit union, to even find, Fin, what we call fintechs, which would be like the PayPal's, the Square, um, Cabbage is another one that are offering these PP, PPP loans. And what I will tell you is all these lenders, whether it's fintech, the big lenders, or even the small community credit union lenders, all of them have to offer you the same exact terms of the loan because it's per the legislation. So they can't you know, you, if you go to a fintech, don't feel like you're going to a payday lender, or if you're going to a big bank, don't think you're going to get better service from a big bank that you wouldn't get at a community lender. Everyone is on the same playing field. Everyone is same, playing by the same rules. So with that, I will, I will turn it over to you all for some question and answers. I'm seeing everyone's typing answers over there, and I know Andrea is over there going to be answering some of those, but uh, maybe as, as we go along. Go ahead, Andrea. Rob, there are actually only only a few, so I was going to say maybe we just uh, answer them directly instead of uh, it, it might help the greater good uh, okay. for that. So one Andrew, question is sorry before I just I don't want to interrupt, but I know Anthony has had his hand up since about five minutes in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we can give Anthony a chance to answer his or ask his question, and then we'll go down the line of questions on the side if you don't mind. Okay, okay, no problem. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead, Anthony. Thanks. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Rob. Thanks for coming. Um, all right, so I've been approved for the PPP, and I'm waiting on the final approval from my bank, which should be any day now. Um, I've been closed since March 19th. My governor has said, oh, I'm in Pennsylvania. They want to start the reopening on May 8th. Well, I'm going to try, since I'm a bakery, I could have been open the whole time. But for health reasons, we decided we were going to stay closed. So I'm going to try and reopen Tuesday, May 5th. If I get my money uh, in the next week, let's say, does my eight weeks start immediately or does it start when I reopen or when we're allowed to reopen? The way and, the rule, yeah, Anthony, the way the rule is written, it, it the clock starts ticking the moment you get the money. All right. So the second question was, I heard you say it's all payroll related for the forgiveness part. But if when I was reading it and on all the different webinars I've been on, I thought that anything payroll related, including health insurance, IRA, my own pay, uh, rent, utilities, that's all yeah. included in the forgiveness, right? So, just, and let me clarify, I may have said it wrong, so I apologize. 75% is what I would say is the, for the, the payroll period. So that includes taxes, healthcare, retirement, you name it, is in that 75%, including 
yourself as an owner operator is included in that 75%. The 25% would be everything else that you have in your business. Suppliers. Obviously, right, right, correct. In, any of that, 100% is forgiven as long as you follow those, those rules that is within the compliance portion of the loan. So it'll be forgiven after that. Last question for me, and then I'll turn it over to everybody else. Is all my people have been able to get on unemployment? I had to lay everybody off. I have 20 employees. They're all on unemployment. They all want to come back to work. Nobody's afraid. We just got to figure out how we're going to do it. So once the clock starts ticking, do I just make up hours and just figure out a way to pay them so that I'm, you know, in compliance? Is that what I have to do? That's what I would do. There has not been like more guidance than to say okay once you get the disbursement you got to start paying the employees so you get the forgiveness of the loan what i would say is good obviously good faith effort keep very good records of everything you are doing and third i would i, I would just create a schedule and start bringing them on and if that means and, and this is unfortunate that i say this if they're just sitting at home doing nothing but you're paying them that's the whole purpose of the legislation is to keep people off unemployment and keep them basically in your fold as your employee. That's why it's, it, you get the forgiveness. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Andrew. I'm going to unmute you and then we'll go down the line of questions on the side and I see a few hands up. So we'll hit those as well. We have plenty of time, so we'll get to everybody's questions for sure. Right, so um, just there have been a few about employees, like what if we can't bring them back to work? Do we stagger them? Can they come back to work part time and then um, yet you still pay them their quote full time salary or, you know, Anthony, this goes back a little bit to your question of, you know, typically they only work 20 hours a week, but I only have 10 hours worth of work for them. How do I still meet that 75% payroll? Uh, and I know Rob's got an answer for that for everyone. So the way the legislation is crafted is, is that it says 75% uh, of the loan is spent on payroll. I would stay in that lane. So as long as you can craft it, that 75% is spent that way, I would believe that you are in compliance with the law. Again, it's a good faith effort uh, on this. I think the other thing just for everyone that's on this call that you should watch out for is one, if the CARES Act is modified again by the, in the next coming days by Congress and certainly the president, and then also more guidelines that will be coming out from Treasury, the IRS, and then obviously us. Um, so that, that would probably be the other caveat that I would tell you. I know that doesn't give you all warm and fuzzies uh, when it comes to dealing with the government and it's like, we're government, we're here to help. And that like this freaks you all out. I get it. I was a private sector guy before I, I, I had this role. So I get it. Um, but, but what I will tell you is if you can craft it so that 75% of that overall loan you are getting is going to payroll and associated payroll expenses like healthcare and whatnot, which includes yourself, um, I would say you will be in compliance with the law. So however you structure that in your business, and obviously if you guys are in the, re you're in the retail baking industry, I would imagine you got a lot of part-time employees. So you guys know how to do that. And also you can, so the SBA does have a, a resource network of hundreds of partners that can help guide you on that work. Um, the easiest way to find that is sba.gov slash local assistance. They are doing virtual and phone uh, trainings with people so they can understand, you know, well, what can I do? What can't I do? Uh, the SBA, um, you know, part of the SBA's role is to fund these resource partners to help small businesses across the nation for that. Um, so if there's a question on that, um, they can get into the specific details because, as Rob is indicating, every business is different. Um, you've got, you know, you may have multiple owners, uh, just a, a variety of, of differences that these resource partners can help all the way down to the specific. Um, Rob, another question has been around um, the forgiveness details. When will those be finalized? I know that comes in a little later. Um, with the banks figuring that out with regard to the loan. And then also, 
Um, with regard to the, um, the, the money, the 75% versus the 25%, if you can go into a little bit more detail on that 25%, because I believe um, it's accurate to say that 25% can be used toward working capital. So again, pay, paying your suppliers uh, and other portions. Rob has all the paperwork, thus why he's pointing it out. And the reason why, um, I'll just fill in a little bit on this, um, this is all dictated by Congress. So we have to go back in and, and try to give you as best direction as we can based on the law. Uh, and then there are final rules that are written based on what Congress originally approved in that law. So that's why some of this is, there are still some moving parts that are going on. Uh, SBA pretty much does what the law, what Congress has approved. Um, we just put it into action. Uh, to kind of answer the, the, since it's in front of me, the 25%. So the way, the way it is, and, and just so you all, what I'm looking at right now is accessible to you as well. Um, and to give you a little civics lesson, very small civics lesson, uh, Congress passes the laws, obviously the president signs them in, and they also do a thing called, um, basically they delegate rulemaking authority to the kind of experts in the field. And that, those rules are printed in the federal register, uh, similar to what you guys have to comply with, with like health codes and stuff like that. It's a very similar thing, but on, the, on a federal scope. So what I am looking at is the rules and regulations that were published in the federal register on April 15th. So literally uh, last week. And it literally says uh, on uh, just section R, and we'll we'll email this to you, um, uh, to the to the leader uh, of this call. You know, I know uh, Andrea will email it, and so that you guys will have a PDF copy, so you yourself can look at this. But it basically says, here's the question: How can PPP loans be used? And it literally says the proceeds of the PPP loan are to be used for one payroll costs as defined under the act okay so in the in the healthcare the cares act it defines what payroll costs which include related to the continuation of group health care benefits uh, and also during periods of paid sick medical family leave and insurance premiums the other is mortgage interest payments rent payments utility payments interest payments on any other debt obligations that was incurred before February 15th of 2020 and or refinancing of an SBA I, idle loan, which, you know, if you get an idle loan, that's another conversation to have. If you, if you don't, then don't worry about that portion. But if you do, um, do so. Um, but again, the verbiage used here is at least 75% of the PPP loan proceeds shall be used for payroll costs. Okay, so let me tell you, I'm a lawyer. Shall is a definitely determining word. So you have to at least spend 75%. If you spend 100%, you're good. Anything under 75%, you're not good. So 75 and above is good. Um, and, and it literally goes into more detail here. Um, you know about that 75 percent and, and everything but it basically says that it it was based upon the equivalent of eight weeks of payroll and basically what congress did is they looked into a crystal ball and they said okay we're probably going to be in this another eight weeks plus you add a couple weeks and pushing out the funds and whatnot so they were expecting by by at least june 30th that we would be totally out of this crisis so that's kind of how they determined that that answers that question uh, what was the other question, Andrea? I'm sorry. Um, about the employees. So if they're on unemployment, um, can we do, uh, we covered a little bit on, on part-time versus full-time. Um, and then for, forgiveness details. So you covered like which and what utilities, um, then, you know, full-time versus part-time. A lot of yeah, and around plus the basis of the employees. Yeah, so basically, Ba what what it's saying here in the law also is, is it talks about documentation, ver verifying your full-time equivalent employees on a payroll. 
okay? And then it also says loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of documented payroll costs, mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, and covered utilities. As explained, not more than 25% of the forgiven amount may be for non-payroll costs. So again, they are basing this on, by that verbiage is what I, what I would interpret it as, is that whether it's part-time or full-time, it's in there. It's basically a full-time equivalent, um, and you can add all that together. As long as it's 75% or above, it will be forgiven. As far as when it'll be paid off or specifically forgiven, um, that is still getting worked out, okay? And that's actually a, a huge question by the banks. <laughs> Um, okay. One um, other option maybe to cover, Rob, is can you get both, the PPP loan and EIDL? Um, because it seems like a lot of these questions are around, well, okay, I pay my employees, but I still have all these other operations and stuff I need to do, um, which is where the EIDL will come in or some other type of financing. And then it looks like specifically, just to clear up to what the PPP loan is, it's a two-year term at a 1% interest rate. Uh, so um, if it is not forgiven, that's the term of the loan. Again, two years, 1%, and then idle will, idle. Rob will go into a little detail as to idle and how that compares. Um, and then additional or traditional SBA backed lending. We do have deferred payments and debt relief on those products as well. Yeah, so just so everyone on the call is clear, um, any SBA product that you say like you have an SBA loan now before the crisis, that is automatically deferred for six months. You do not need to make payments, nothing on it for six months. If you get a PPP loan, you don't have to pay anything on it for six months. Don't even worry about it. And it'll be, if you follow the, and, and comply with the rules, it will be forgiven. I would probably say within that six months, I, I, I'm not going to give you a blanket statement and say that's going to happen, but I would, probably be assured it's going to be forgiven as long as you comply you do the compliance portion of it but say like you don't comply with it say like you're just going to get the loan and say you know what i'll just take it as a loan i don't want the forgiveness or whatever you want then as andrea said it is a one percent interest uh plus uh, it's a two-year term so again very favorable interest not so favorable term uh but it is it is manageable uh portion of it um, what Andrea had mentioned about the EIDL loan or, or the economic injury disaster loan, you actually can get both. You can have an economic injury disaster loan and it is a loan. It is not forgivable. That will be have to be paid back. And then obviously the PPP being forgivable. The key point on the two, if you get both loans, the, they have to be used for different purposes. So if you have an economic injury disaster loan, you cannot use it for the same purpose as the PPP loan. So translation on the PPPP, use it for payroll. Okay. You will not, you will be in compliance if you use it for payroll on the economic injury disaster loan, use it for everything else. Okay. Whether it be mortgage, rent, equipment, lease rent, whatever suppliers, whatever you, you need it for. That's what I use on the economic injury disaster loans. Those are up to a 30 year term, an interest rate of 3.75% for a for-profit business. Uh, what I will tell you is that is the only time um, the SBA does a direct lend. So on the economic injury disaster loans, you're not going to a lender for that. You're coming directly to the SBA. And we're the ones using government taxpayer funds that are loaning that money out. This is a program that has been in existence for many, many years. Um, we actually had started offering it to folks probably about a month, almost a month before really stuff started closing down and states started closing down. Um, so you may have heard about that. And then obviously the PPP uh, program came about. Um, one other item is uh, what's happening with the loans, right? So. And, and maybe that you cleared this up a little bit with about the banks. Uh, so I guess I can clear it up as well. So any loan application that was in the SBA system at the time that the money, the appropriated funds were um, used up, 
is being processed. If your bank did not get it into the, the SBA system, so again, it's the banks that are doing these loans, then your loan is on hold until Congress appropriates more funds. Uh, so uh, that's just a little clarity on the process of where those loans are sitting. Now, should those the Congress appropriate more funds, we probably, as Rob indicated, will have a little bit of delay, only because there's some more spec specifications that Congress is considering. We don't know yet if those will come through, uh, but that Congress is considering with regard to rural-based uh, businesses, uh, CDFIs participating, and the like. So those are a lot more intricacies that are um, being added to this, pro that could potentially be added to this program as Congress debates the additional funding. Anything else? Okay. Um, another question, are we allowed to prepay rent in advance? Again, the caution on that is 75% of the PPP for it to be forgiven uh, needs to go toward payroll. So if you have extra money, um, that should probably be going to payroll versus, um, you know, but that you'll have to figure out with your finances. And what I have heard some small businesses doing is setting up a separate account. So they get their money, let's say it's $100,000 from the PPP loans, $100,000, they set up a separate account so they can show that, okay, $75,000 of that $100,000 went directly to payroll. Um, you know, and then the other 25,000 went wherever. Uh, so that is how some businesses are, are in part uh, looking to protect themselves to make sure that their, their loan uh, is forgiven. And, and to add to that, Andrew, the 75%, that includes taxes. So obviously you guys got to, you know, you got an overall check, you have to maybe set aside, you know, federal, state, you know, the typical things you have to set aside to pay the taxes that and that 75 percent that accounts for that so don't think oh i gotta add taxes on top of 75 percent 75 percent encompasses all that health care costs everything taxing you know social security everything uh, make sure that you you take that into account and it looks like um lynn kind of along the same line she asked a question about you know what if the money comes in the middle of the pay period you know does it matter when i start well the, the eight weeks so as long as you can have that 70 start the day you get the money as long as you can have that 75% of money go toward your payroll by the end of that week those eight weeks if you want it to be forgiven then you can start your you can start it whenever like it doesn't need to you get it and then the next day pay your employees type of thing I'm gonna start on meeting a few lines. We have a few people waving hands. So first we're gonna start with Kara. Kara, I'm gonna unmute your line for a question. Yeah, thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. Um, my question, sorry, my question is, I know that the eight weeks starts and at the end of the eight weeks, we need to have our FTE count, right? So we, we know when we applied, we said we had X amount of full-time employees and we're gonna hold true to that. What happens, and this is obviously not what we want to happen, but what happens if business doesn't come back at the end of that eight weeks? When is that like moment where you have to have that full time, that head count? And how is that being, like how, how do we expect that to be sort of monitored? What happens if we have to lay off, you know, the following week? How, do, how will we manage that? Or how should we manage that part? To be in compliance for the PPP? Mm -hmm. Com yeah, PPP. Yeah, so it's just the eight weeks. If after eight weeks, you're like, you know, I, I can only have half these people working for me, then that's, that's where you're at. So that, okay. un, un, until they change, if they would change the legislation, obviously my, my advice would change. But I would say after that eight weeks, you know, if you can't keep them on, then that's what you got to do. But you would Originally, be in compliance with the law. Sorry, I interrupted. No, no, no. Um, you're fine. <laughs> Originally, um, they were saying a June thirtieth date. Is that has that kind of disappeared? Is it now just eight weeks? Uh, and and with like the new funding, because we haven't been approved yet, um, our bank didn't move fast enough, so we are in that group that you talked about. And so. Um, with has is that June thirtieth still a thing, or is it just like eight weeks from when you get your money to when? You have so, that? so the June thirtieth is, is basically the cutoff 
uh, on it, but it is the eight week window. So the moment okay. you're dispersed, you have the eight weeks. And then after that, certainly you can, you can make that determination. Um, but June 30th is a cutoff. Now, granted, lenders are struggling to make that 10 day closing window and make those disbursements. So that that's another issue that I think maybe Congress is going to deal with in the next coming days because there's been multiple lenders that have said, because the, the sh there are some lenders out there that have done more loans in the last two weeks than they've done in a year. So they're mm -hmm. having issues closing the loans and obviously you know, they have to close the loan in order to disperse the funds to you all. Um, so that, that's part of the problem and the clock doesn't start ticking until you get the money. Right. Good. And just to clarify, um, we can bring on new employees. It does not have to be the same. It just needs to be bodies. Right? There, is, there is nothing in the law or in the regs that state it has to be the same folks. It's just Great. the same FTE count. Great. Thank you. Bernadette, you're muted. Am I on? Am I up? You're on. <laughs> it helps if I unmuted myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so th thanks, Rob, for doing this. We uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate this. You taking your time to do that. Second, thanks, Kara. You asked all the questions that I had. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the third thing, could you be a little bit more specific on the eligible costs out of that 25 percent or or come about it this way what should we not be using the money for that vacation in florida you may not <laughs> want to use the phone already canceled <laughs> yeah yeah they just opened up the beaches so um what i would tell you is i would use verbatim from the language they use in the rule um, and this is really the only direction that we have on that 25%. And again, we'll email this, this federal register posting to y'all. So you make sure you have it. It's, it's in a PDF copy, but it literally states here, mortgage interest payments, rent payments, utility payments, and interest payments on any other debt obligations that were incurred before February 15th, 2020, and or the refinancing of a loan, uh, of the idle loan, I apologize. And that is, that is what they're stating here. So again, know that 75% is the, basically the floor that you guys can't go below. If you guys decide, hey, I wanna spend 100% on of this on payroll, then you can do it, and that way you're definitely covered. Um, the other items like rent payments, utility payments, interest payments on debt prior to February 15, 2020. I mean, if, I if I'm you guys and that, that's, that, that's the advice I'm giving you, I would do it within the letter of what they're providing me in the Federal Register posting because this is the, technically the law that, that they are providing. Uh, that way you're covered. So if you've got utility, I'm sure you all got utility payments got to pay and, and rent payments or whatever else, or, or a mortgage you got to pay for your business. I, I would just follow that. If, if you got the extra 25% in the loan, I would just use it for that. But in addition, let's say we spent 100% on payroll. We still have to hit that full-time equivalent, don't we? Yeah, that you got the loan based upon. Yes, that is correct. Okay, okay. I'm going to go to um, Paul next. Paul had his hand up there too. Paul, you're unmuted. Thank you. You just answered my question. Uh, John <laughs> asked me just as I was typing. So even if we reach the 75% within the eight weeks, we still need to match the head count. Uh, yeah, because that was the, the, the purpose of the loan is, is when you applied, you had to provide that. So that that's, yes, I would say that. But I, here's the other thing I, I would probably say that has to be flushed out some more. I, I believe there's going to be more guidance on that particular point because here's the other issue that I'm sure I will get asked by one of you here eventually that I've been asked by other entities. You may have employees that don't, that won't come back. Okay. They're making more money on unemployment right now because of the kicker than they would working for you. I mean, that, that sounds terrible, but it just is what it is. You know, so you're going to struggle possibly one bringing that particular person back, and then secondly, you know, getting getting a new employee onboarded. 
So I, I, I'm not trying to scare you all on this, but I think that portion of it is going to have to be flushed out a little more where it may not be exactly an FTE count and they may extend it. They're going to have to do something with that because there's a lot of small business, especially in your guys' industry where I, I would probably put you guys more in the restaurant t style type, you know, employment status where you have a lot of employees that, that probably would fall into that category where they'll make more money on unemployment with the kicker than they would coming back and working for y'all. So I, I think more to come. That's why pay attention. Um, you know, probably your organization is going to have to stay on top of this, which I'm sure they are. Hence they, they have us on the call. Um, but again, more to come, probably more guidance on that as, as we get, as we walk down this road a couple Sure. Months. An important factor is our business model might be changing or yeah. will be changing. Whether yeah. we change it or it's the new normal, we might right. not need that many people. Uber Lyft. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, I'm coming over to you. One moment. Oops. Sorry, okay. Patty. There you go. You're unmuted. Thanks. Okay. So I'm going to try to ask this as clear as I can, but let's say that we don't meet the 75% number for payroll and related taxes and healthcare and benefits. Let's say we only hit 50% of that. Is the 25% that can be used for mortgage interest and utilities, is that amount reduced based on the reduction for what we didn't hit under the, under the payroll part? So I, I, get, I think I get your question where is it, all or, is it all or none, black or white, or is it, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll get up to this percentage and some of it will be excused, whereas, yeah. It's I, the I, latter I, part. I, right, yeah. right. I get your question. The way it's written now, it's black or white. Okay, so either it's 75% and above um, is used for payroll, then it's all forgiven. That's kind of what my, my earlier comment was. I, I think there's going to be a need for more flexibility built into the guidance because it's, it's a pretty draconian where it's either, you know, black or white and there's no sliding scale or anything like that. And I think that's going to be very hard for say like you folks on this call for your industry to come the employees back. And, and just like you said, the business model may have to change permanently or temporarily. So you may not, even be able to comply with this um so the way it is now if you don't comply it's not a forgivable loan and it's the one percent over a two-year term that's how it is right now but as i said I, i'm fairly confident that more guidance will come from this okay thank you john i'm coming back to you yeah robert Rob, I just wanted to add, it, it's taken us a year and a half or more just to get up to the full-time equivalent that we had. And we do have some people that have told us, no, they're older, they're going to retire, they're not going to come back. So we might have, and, and for some of these employees, trust me, we weren't real choosy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it, it, it's sometimes, it's tough to, uh, to get those numbers up. And I think we're really going to struggle. That's going to be our, our toughest uh, thing to do is to get those numbers, the full-time equivalents up, but we're working at it. Yeah, yeah, no. And, and again, I, 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 the spirit of the law is this. It really, it, it is a good faith effort. That's why I personally believe Congress or even in the guidelines, it's going to get flushed out more. Know that we stood this program up in less than a week. From when Congress passed the CARES Act, we were, we were offering this loan out on the market within six days. Uh, we're a little over three and a half weeks out from that time, from when it was passed. So know that for government to move this fast was like a, a divine event. Uh, more to come on it. I, I truly believe that. Um, you know, and as I said, every day it's getting better and better. And I think it'll be flushed out by the time that you guys are going to have to start making these difficult decisions. And, and I would maybe even say Congress is going to do the job 
for you because they're getting a lot of feedback from trade organizations, lenders. And Rob, just one point on that. It looks like uh, they're much closer to a deal. Breaking news oh. um, <laughs> is it looks like a deal is uh, has been reached on additional aid uh, from Congress. So stay tuned over the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, that news will, will be coming out. And just another point on uh, how to stay up to date. Um, one of the easiest ways I know all of our district offices across the nation are informing the public as best they can uh, via Twitter, uh, email newsletters, and our website is constantly being updated as well. So again, that website is sba.gov. Uh, you can sign up for up email updates at sba.gov slash updates, put in your zip code and you'll get local information there. Uh, and then again, sba.gov slash local assistance can help you find those resource partners that, that can walk you through uh, all these items. Rob, there was one more question too, I don't think that we've touched on yet, the full-time equivalent. What, what is that? I know IRS defines it as 30, approximately, I think 130 hours a month, 30 hours per week. Is that the same full-time equivalent that's being used for these loans? That is my understanding, and that is what they're referring to in the Small Business Act under the rule. Um, so that would be my understanding of it. Okay, I wish are, I worked 30 hours a week, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to head to Be Happy Pie Company. I am unmuting your line. Go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, I have been paying my employees since we closed on March 24th. So I guess I'm, I'm, I feel really stupid, and maybe you guys have touched on this, but can I just use the money? Like, what, when I get the... I'm hoping when I get my paycheck protection money, which I don't even know if I'm, I've been approved for, I know it's been submitted, but can I, can I just put that money in my account to replenish my, my reserve? Because I've, you know, I've been running payroll like normal, but nobody's been working. So it's just dwindling, my account is just getting smaller and smaller. Does that make sense? Like, you know, you, you mentioned the eight week, yeah, uh, you're 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 saying can I can I basically be reimbursed for funds that I've already expended and the eight week period could have started weeks ago mm -hmm. when you were already paying out these monies? I I get your question. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to get back with you on that that <laughs> question. So Andrea, let's note that one. Um, because I thought that's that's kind of what it was all for, you know, is to keep, like you said, to keep people off unemployment. And I have all part-time people. Um, and now I'm getting scared because this FTE, it never said, at least in the stuff I saw, it just asked how many employees do you have? And I said eight, which I have eight, eight girls. They all work different amounts of hours. Some are high school kiddos, you know, that are working, not not very much but i'm still paying them because i don't want them to go anywhere either you know i've trained them i want to keep them um so i'm scared now that because they don't work that much but they're that would they not be considered an ft or full-time or you know what i mean the the way if i'm you here's here's how i would break it down so and it's kind of like exactly what andrea said you get 100 grand you take seventy five thousand dollars, and you spend that for payroll period okay i think the fte thing i i don't think that's gonna that's gonna stick i don't okay. think it can stick um i think that was Congress and, and obviously the agency saying, hey, we want you guys to keep all your employees on board, keep paying them, keep paying them, keep paying them. I think that was the attempt, but it, it probably was not exactly a realistic expectation. So I think more to come on that aspect. So I think what Andrea Andrea suggested, and I think that's solid advice that, that you just set aside the 75% or, or 100%, whatever you decide, but at least, at least that 75% set it aside. As far as the prepayment of, of the funds, I'm, I'm looking at the actual rule here. I don't see any verbiage in here on that. So let me, let me get back with you on that. Um, if you could, and everyone on this call, write this down. 
Um, it's my, my personal information. Um, Robert. And I can email this out to Rob if that would be helpful. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, okay, Robert. Perfect. Yeah. Robert dot Scott S E O T T at SBA.gov. Um, but ma'am, if you could just email me just your information, I know what the question is. Uh, and give me, give me a couple days on that question. I, I will ask uh, the powers to be okay. and, and see if I can get you an answer. I mean, I'm looking at the verbiage here. The problem that I, that I see is there's a, there's a line item here that says period beginning on February 15th, 2020 and ending on December 31st, 2020. So that may be the time frame that they're looking, but that, that is, the window yeah. February 15th so that is prior to when you're going to get the fund so you technically maybe that's a that's a maybe but let me make sure that my interpretation of that is correct okay thank you so I'm going to go to Lynn Lynn you had a call about the same sort of issue so I'm going to unmute Lynn's line Lynn you are unmuted okay um yeah the form didn't really say that it was FTEs, it just asked the number of employees and I counted the number of people on my payroll. So is there a way that I can go in and adjust that to FTEs? There I've is been not. approved when I'm waiting, huh? There is I've not. been approved when I'm waiting yeah. for it. Yeah, if, if, it's not? Been, if it's been submitted into our system, there's no way of adjusting that. that. What I would recommend is if you feel like the monies that you've been approved for, that um, you can't necessarily allocate 75% of that to your, to your payroll. Don't accept that amount, accept a lesser amount. You are allowed to do that. The lender will have to deal with that though. So I spend that amount. I'm just saying that I won't have that number of FTEs. I'll have that many bodies because I have about 40 full-time employees and lots of part-time employees. Yeah. And again, it goes, back to kind of the advice I was given earlier is, is that I don't think FTE thing is going to stick. I think it's going to be based okay. on 75% or, or above being spent for payroll expenses, which includes yourself. So I would base it on that. As long as you comply with that, I would likely say you're going to, you're going to comply. If we get different direction than that, we will certainly provide that. Thank you. Was there anybody else, we're just about out of time, but was there anybody else that would like to ask a question that hasn't had a chance to? You can give me a wave or even in the chat box, um, just let me know. Okay, Fran, I'm coming to you. Fran, your line is unmuted. Hi, everybody. I just need a clarification because I think um, it was kind of danced around a little bit, but my understanding was with the 75% for payroll, that I get the breakout between the 25 and the 75, but my understanding was that that's the percentage calculation that's to, to determine forgiveness. I didn't perceive it from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce document that it was an all or nothing, that you either meet, meet that criteria and then um, your loan is forgiven. I thought it was that's the percentage of your loan that would be forgiven. So say, for example, you fall short of that, then that's the remaining amount that you have to pay back over that 18-month or two-year period at 1%. Uh, I will tell you that the way that we have been instructed uh, to advise and what I'm reading into the rule is that if you meet, the, it, it's, it's an all or nothing type thing. You've got to meet the 75% criteria or none of it's forgiven. That, that, there's no like sliding scale. Um, and then as far as the 25% too, for whatever uh, you, you as a business owner would spend it on, that has been the interpretation that I have been provided. And then what I have read in the rule is what, how I read it as well. Um, I would be interested, actually, that would be great if that, if, if that is different advice that is, that is out there. But what I'm telling you is that's what we're being told. How about this, Francis? Let me get back with you. <laughs> I don't, yeah, thanks. It's no problem. I just, I know that this is probably going to change over the next three to five days anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, no, and I completely agree. Okay, we have uh, time for just about one more question. So, Anthony, I'm going to come back to you. Your line is unmuted. 
It's a stupid question. Um, <laughs> how did those big guys get in and steal that money? Uh, Chipotle <laughs> and the things we saw in the news, uh, Shake Shack and Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. How did they get approved for a, a small business SBA loan? Uh, so the SBA has qualified franchises, uh, thousands of them are listed on our website that, that will qualify for an SBA loan. And I would say the vast majority of those were franchises where it'd be like the McDonald's or the Starbucks, uh, where there are individuals that own franchises, which are deemed, uh, small businesses and under our affiliation rules, they qualify. Same with the Ruth Chris. I know it looks bad. Uh, you know that at Ruth Chris, where you're 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 having a seventy five dollar steak. I get it, but they are small businesses under under the law under the law that Congress provided us. Um, and if you, ironically, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, Ruth Chris, oh, what the heck? And then I Google it, and I I research the corporation, and they are actually broken up to to handle different aspects of the business, and then also they are also they have franchises. So I know that number of 10 million and they maxed out, but Ruth Chris, I mean, I've been to one in Chicago. I mean, it, it, it's big. I mean, they, they employ a lot of people um, and they are a small business as defined under our rules. Okay. And, and like the girl from the pie shop, I had to put in $40,000 of my own money to cover our last payroll and our health insurance for this month of April. Can I use some of this PPP money to pay myself back or it's just a, considered an uh, influx into the business. I would say there's probably a way with creative accounting, and I'm not saying doing anything <laughs> illegal. I am not I saying that. that. I'm not advocating for that. Let me stop the recording right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I would say there's got to be a way. Um, I, I'm not an accountant. I'm a lawyer, so I, I'm not going to give you that type of advice, but. I would have a, a, a discussion with your accountant. I'm sure there's a way. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one more question, Fran. I'm gonna unmute your line. Um, it won't let me for some reason. Fran, can you unmute? There you go. Fran, you're unmuted. No, I wasn't asking a question. I was just laughing to myself as an ex-accountant that that's called cooking the book. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not advocating for cooking books. I'm not accusing you. I'm just finding it very. I find it very funny. <laughs> We're actually just um, baking the books. Right. <laughs> you know what? We are just at three o'clock, so I'd like to thank our guests so much for being on this call today, Rob and Andrew. Thank you so much. I think this was so helpful. I unmuted everybody's line, um, just so we can have an open discussion for the last few minutes, but. Um, you know, our bakeries, obviously, sometimes they get clumped into restaurants, sometimes they get clumped into different categories, but we're such a strong category in all of our communities that it's really important that the SBA see us as a viable resource for you guys as well. Um, so as some of these things are happening, just remember that the RBA is here, that all of these bakers are here. Um, you know, we really appreciate all this information. It's, it's the ones that are on this call right now are the ones that are um, not sleeping at night. So, <laughs> so we really want to thank you both for being on the call. So everybody's line is unmuted. Um, I, I, I want to slip a question in real quick to the other bakers that I don't know how many of you guys are actually closed or if you're open, but I've been closed and I'm going to be reopening in early May. And I'm worried about the social distancing, how we're going to actually work in the bakery. I mean, when you make cookies and, and you're side by side on the table, <laughs> How are you guys handling that and the other bakers that are open? So oh, I can I can answer that. We have split our crew up into two different crews. We have a commercial kitchen that has a very small little bakery in the front, kind of like a patisserie, and then our, our other bakery. And so the two crews do not mingle at all. There's no social distancing. Now we did close our lobbies, even though we're considered an essential service and could be open. But we keep our two crews separate in the event somebody gets sick out of one of them and we have to quarantine for a while we still have a crew that can operate we'd have to are you wearing masks are you wearing masks we're wearing masks we're wearing gloves and then we just got in the face shields the kind that come here and 
They're more like a what I would call a spit guard, for lack of a better term. We are of scares. We have had to quarantine. Um, so, yeah, uh, but that's what we're doing. And then we are reopening to the public the first week in May, kind of middle of the week, just because we're having some, doing some um, painting and such while we're shut down, just trying to get some things done. Congratulations, by the way, Patty. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments before we say goodbye for the afternoon? No? Great, Thanks, thank you all. Good. Thank you all so much for being on these calls. And, and if you have topic ideas for these town hall meetings, just let us know. Um, again, Rob and Andrea, thank you so much for being on the call. Thank you, guys. Thanks, have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.